We are tough on other women because we are tough on ourselves. So we need to give space for grace for yourself. First, if you're going to be gracious and loving and bold and beautiful toward others. We have got to start loving ourselves well. So, Carla, have you hit record? Great, good job, I forgot about that, thank you. So we have got to start loving ourselves well so we can love others well, okay? It's love him, love yourself, and love others. It's really, really important. So what I'm gonna do is I've got a few notes I've been preparing and praying and, uh, and, and I've got some specific scriptures to give you as to why God doesn't just care about what you wear, but why he delights in seeing you look and be absolutely free and beautiful. And the way that Alma feels beautiful is different the way that young Jin feels beautiful. The way that Sarah feels like a bold light on a hill is different than how Shirley or Debbie are going to feel bold and beautiful. Uh, if you're in our Dress to Connect group, and this is so good, guys, this is so good. There is a, a beautiful woman who um, commented on my post. You know that I've shared it quite a few times. A few years ago in, uh, in New York City, I had a photo shoot that was really personal to to me and I had my makeup, my face was clear before the shoot and then I had after. I've shared it many times, many of you know what it is, um, and it was a purposeful battlefield, kind of bloodied and battled, uh, yeah, a kind of war zone shoot, right? I had overcome something very, very powerful that God really helped me with um, that was very painful to me. And, uh, and, I, and he gave me the tools to come out of that. And so I just needed to experience uh, uh, walking off the battlefield. I actually wasn't as dirty as I wanted to be. I wanted to be muddied and bloodied, but uh, it was beautiful. I did it with some precious friends and, and, and Karen, you guys even popped in into New York after that. It was amazing. Um, and then a, and a woman did comment in our, um, on the post saying, you know, it uh, doesn't really come across as the bold light on a hill that I advocate because the makeup is a bit heavy. It's a bit scary and there's a spec scar and all right, so I'm really glad that she did that. I'm really glad that she had the courage to give that feedback. Uh, probably what she could have done is maybe say, was this for a photo shoot? Was, is this how you normally wear your makeup? Because that would give, it, give her some information. But this is a good example of how we judge one another. That if somebody wears a lot of makeup, let's say that was my daily makeup, and it's a bit scary for someone, how do you give that feedback to someone, right? Without fearing for your life. <laughs> If someone is looking bold and confident and strong and a little bit intimidating, how do you connect with that person? How does she know she's coming across as intimidating unless somebody has the courage and the desire to be in unity to say, hey, Linda, can I ask you something? Is this your daily makeup? Is it, I'm just interested. And then have a conversation, right? And you need to know what you're doing and your motivation must always be pure, of course. So, so that's what we're looking at. So I explained to her what it is. It was a real blessing to me. But there are women who wear makeup who judge women who don't, which is also BS, right? I have lots of clients who don't wear makeup and they are judged for being plain James. They're not. They just take care of their skin in a different way. And so we need to, why must we put faith and action and freedom and, and our beauty in one big melting pot? Because the world needs women who are bold, confident, successful, beautiful, and loving and caring and kind to bring everyone together. All right, so we're, we're gonna dive deep into this. So if you're new here, welcome. You're so welcome here. We have free webinars that run once or twice a month. Uh, you're so welcome to give, put your questions in the chat box. Carla's gonna keep an eye on the questions. I'm going to answer them. Uh, if you have a question right now about faith and fashion and beauty, pop it into your chat box right now, type it up and Carla is going to read it to me, only because, well, actually, no, I could read it. I've got my keypad here. I'm gonna do that for two minutes. If nobody's got questions right now, then, see, I can't see far without this. Where's my chat box? So I'm just gonna open it up. If you have a question, pop it in. If you don't, then let it go throughout the thing and I'll catch you about halfway through, okay? If you have a question, say, I have a question and I can unmute you and we can chat on video. We have a bit of space to do that right now. Otherwise, we're gonna get going, guys. Yes, Rachel, it is you in Australia. Nice for you to join us. So glad to see you here. Paula, welcome, good to see you. Okay, so keep your questions. If I come up with a scripture about your beauty or about something that you're not sure of or that you want more information on, 
then put in there, I have a question and type your question up and Carla's gonna keep track. All right, so we're gonna hit it. Guys, pen and paper, I've got a lot of things that are gonna fly at you. You'll have heard some of them. You won't have heard all of them. And then we're gonna have a conversation. Right before we go, I want you to unmute yourself as I call on you and tell me what is the one thing that you are having faith for this year that you're gonna to commit to putting your action behind. So I'm gonna start with the view in front of me. And I'm gonna say, Karen, unmute yourself and just give me one word. What is the one thing that you're going after this year? Consistency. Consistency, okay. So Karen is gonna take her faith and her action and her commitment and her time and she's gonna come out trumps on the 31st of December saying, I was more consistent this year than I think I've ever been, right? Alma, I'm you to give you your one word. What are you going after? I'm going after action instead of perfection. Action instead of perfection. I love it. Yes. We had a coaching call uh, earlier this week with my beautiful clients, and that is it. Take action. Screw perfection, man. Nobody's got time for that. Okay. There's no time for that anymore. So that's awesome. Carla, what are you going after? This year, I'll be going after my health and fitness. Your health. Can everyone hear you? Can you? Can you hear can you, me? Is your volume up? It is up. Okay. Did I hear you say health? Yeah. All right. Okay. So you will see Cutler looking and feeling different at the end of this year. Young Jen, what are you going after? Uh, being his daughter. Okay. So knowing and feeling and walking in being a daughter. That's absolutely fantastic. I love that. Happy birthday to your dad, by the way. Thank you. I hope you don't mind. I was very cheeky. I sent him a message and I told him he should be very proud of you. Aww. for How you are doing what you're doing and the daughter that you are on and, and how you are a, a, an amazing role model for your family. So I hope you didn't think there was some weird chick on the other side of the planet messaging him. <laughs> Debbie, what's Thank the one you. thing you're going after? Oh, Debbie, I, don't, I can't hear you. Can you unmute yourself? There, go. This year, I'm, yeah. This year, I'm going after grace. Every definition of grace that there is. Nice. Okay. Where are you based, Debbie? Where do you live? Oh, I live in Virginia. Okay. All right. Great. Welcome. Thanks for joining us, Renee. What are you going after? My word for this year is create, and um, I want to. I want to create a. Just, I always say I want to get back to myself. I want to create the best self. Nice. So Creation. Okay. And every single woman, is there anyone here who doesn't think that she's creative? Is someone here not creative? Good. You know me too well. <laughs> we're created in his image. So we're all creative. Nice, Renee. Okay, Sarah, I like your t-shirt. Let's see that t-shirt a little bit more, please. I love my body. Nice. I like it. I like it. Awesome way to pitch up for a faith and fashion webinar. What are you going after, Sarah? Um, loving my body. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Guys, yeah. Sarah is, how old are you? 20 something? 26. Okay, 26. Cuddler is 26, I think. Yeah? I keep forgetting your age. <laughs> I'm just between 25 and 26. 26. I'm 48. And I know there are other people here. And I am going after my health this year in a big way. I got a scare and that's enough to uh, take me from interested to completely committed. And I'm going to put, I've already put lots of action behind that. Melanie, oh, Melanie's still tuning in. Rachel, what are you going after? Rachel, if you can unmute yourself, if you're there, tell us the one thing you're going after this year. No, Rachel's not there. Shirley. Are you there? Can you unmute and tell us your one thing? Believe. Okay. What do you believe in for Shirley? Everything. <laughs> Everything. That's good. That's awesome. And by the way, Shirley is someone who started uh, a business throughout COVID from the, she cleaned out her garage or a little office out the back, started something called the flower truck, which is now exploding and she's franchising internationally. Okay. So that is absolutely fantastic. Shirley, I think you've got big things ahead of you in flowers. Oh my gosh. Beautiful. Melanie, I don't know if Melanie is 
It's connected yet. She doesn't look like she has. Is there anyone else I've left out? Because that's all that I can see. So we're good. We rock, we're going to roll, okay? Let's go. Let me just uh, put this where I need to go. Uh, Shirley, if you could mute yourself, that'd be great. I have you still unmuted. Uh, you're still unmuted. All right, there you go. Good job. That's great. Uh, no. <laughs> Shirley, I keep getting you unmuted for some reason. Okay, no, you're off now. You're off, you're off. I see Melanie struggling to uh, get on, but we need to get going. Okay, so let's, let's fly. All right, guys, here we go. So, 2021 being our year of action, okay? I'm going to give you some tools. I'm going to give you some scriptures, and I'm going to give you a call to action at the end. So, uh, we know 2020 was, was rough, right? We know that uh, everyone had a hard time, even if you had successful businesses through 2020. The fact of the matter is, everybody has had to adapt. And so we're not going to focus on 2020 more. 2020 is over. You really need to have shaken that dust off you. You, 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 you dusted off, you, you, you're standing up, and we're facing forward for a new year. Whatever happened, under all the pressure and all the disappointments and all the canceled birthday parties and family events and, and, and uh, being made redundant and being fired and being promoted and everything, Whatever happened, good stuff still comes out of pressure, right? I'm, I'm going to show you how. So, and there's a lot of people, like I said, Shirley and a bunch of other people who launched new businesses out of, uh, out of, out of 2020. Uh, Kamala, can you see the waiting room? Just keep an eye on that, will you? Because uh, someone has been waiting for a while. There you go. All right, thanks. So, so I'm going to give you some examples that I want you to write down of things that were invented during some seriously tough times, World War II, okay? During World War II, they discovered synthetic rubber and oil. Okay, so this is obviously essential for planes and for tanks and everything, but there was a shortage of rubber and of oil. It was the USA that invented synthetic rubber and synthetic oil that actually helped planes to fly better, right? That was a huge invention. The pressurized cabin, Commercial airlines and our ability to fly across the world is thanks to the pressure that came in World War II. Uh, they were flying obviously at high altitude, which is dangerous. It was the B-29 bomber that came up with a pressure cockpit to help the pilots to be more comfortable, more focused, less under pressure and safe. And that pressurized cockpit resulted in commercial flight, which is absolutely fantastic. The radar, as you probably know, was developed to detect radio waves and to send radio waves. So, so the radar was developed under massive pressure. The helicopter, okay, was, was designed, I think it was originally by the Germans, but it was vastly um, improved by, by, um, by the Americans. And um, today, obviously, it's a key attack and reconnaissance and a medical unit. Carla, there are people waiting in the waiting room. You need to put it up, just open the participants. So just let them in, okay? Otherwise, they sit there waiting on the top. Thanks. Um, penicillin, you probably know, 1928, I think what they were about. Alexander Fleming apparently discovered it while trying a few things, but, but, but quite by accident. Penicillin is huge. The aerosol can, okay? I thought about graffiti, but probably there's more positive aerosol can uses. Like, you know, aerosol, hey, spray tan, okay? I have a spray tan aerosol can. This is not spray tan, but my legs are not made spray tan. The atomic bomb and nuclear energy, of course, was uh, invented and discovered during World War II. The light bulb, okay, Thomas Edison. Productivity was seriously limited in World War II. And so the light bulb came out of that. And here's a cool one, right? The slinky. You know the slinky, that little, that little thing? There was a US naval engineer by the name of Richard James. I went and researched this to give you encouragement. Richard James used to use springs um, in the Navy to support and store various naval equipment. And, and one day he dropped something and it kind of did a cool little bounce. And that's how the slinky was invented. Kids all over the world have the slinky. So, so we, we could spend hours on this. You, you'll either find fear or you'll find inspiration, no matter your circumstances. Our income came to 100% standstill when COVID landed. And I've had one of the most successful years of my career because 
the world is looking for people who are going to get up, shake themselves off and get your work and move forward. And you, when you're that woman, it's easy to stand out these guys days. It's easy to set apart. There are women still in their PJs waiting for COVID to make up its mind. But meanwhile, there's a small percentage, including you, who are launching businesses and going after their health, going after their marriage and going after their business and new connections and influence, believing for powerful things. That's what it means to get up, dress up and be a bold ladder and help. So, so you gotta, you gotta ask yourself, what do you have faith in? And write this down on your notes as you're taking notes. What do you have like serious faith in? And if, you, if you're feeling brave, unmute yourself and tell me, like, Linda, this is something that I, not in God, because obviously we're talking about faith in God, our creator, our father. Do you have a lot of faith in your car? It will never break down. Do you have a lot of faith in your marriage and your children? Do you have a lot of faith in your looks? Be honest. One person, come on, unmute. Tell me, where is a lot of your faith placed? Because this is going to be helpful for you. Debbie, go for it. A lot of faith in my children. I have okay. two sons who are adults, and the one is here visiting for a month. He lives on the other side of the country. And watching my two sons interact with one another and the fact that they really have turned into the men that I wanted them to be and I hoped for them gives me a lot of faith and gives me a lot of faith in humanity. Yes. And I hope in yourself, Mom. Well, yeah. I, yeah. So good job. I mean, raising young men is no mean feat. Karen knows she's got four, <laughs> right? So, so I've got clients who've got seven kids, eight kids. That's an amazing thing. So that faith you have in them, you're now going to put in yourself to get up, get dressed, to get out there and go and be that bold light on a hill, right? Yeah. Linda, you got it. So that's awesome, Debbie. I love that. So that which you have a lot of faith in, you're going to say, now I'm going to take that same faith and have it in me because I'm going to help you to align your thoughts about yourself with God's thoughts about you and connect that to your fashion, to your fun, to your freedom and to your spirit of beauty. Is it Terry Kazele or Terry Kazele? Welcome. Am I saying your name right? Hi, good to have you here. Melanie, I see you on, that's fantastic. Okay, so let's dive in guys. It's time to put action um, behind our faith. We said this in the beginning, our spirit of beauty has been under attack for far too long. You're too quiet or you're too bold or you're too beautiful, you're too pretty, or you're not enough, right? All of that BS, we're not gonna focus on anymore. You know how to go and get help for the stuff that's gone behind you. Your present now is focused on building your future. We are the only species that can create our own future. I find that such an incredible gift that God trusts us to do that, which is fantastic. So like you can get yourself, what do I wanna do? And, and when you, if you're thinking about what's my purpose, your purpose is to love him, love yourself, and love his people. If you want to do that through being a surfer, or being a singer, or being a janitor, or being a producer, you get to choose. But that's all of our purpose, right? So we're going to bust some myths going forward about our beauty, and about our fashion, and about personal style, and I'm going to give you some scriptures to back it up. Am I going too fast? Because you know me, I go fast if I get excited. Okay, that's cool. Okay, great. Thank you. So I'm going to give you a couple of things that I get on a regular basis. I actually don't need these specs because I've printed nice and large. <laughs> I'm going to keep that going forward. And guys, let's talk about personal style. You may have seen recently, I shared where I shopped here in South Africa. I'm finding my favorite stores to go to. It is hot as hell here, okay? It's about 115 degrees. Um, doesn't matter what you wear with the aircon on, you're going, to, you're going to sweat. And so loungewear is a great kind of uh, ensemble for working at home. This is good quality, soft, kind of silky, uh, it's kind of viscose material. Am I a guru on fabric? I'm not, but I've got my color because color gives me energy. These are my colorful, um, some of my favorite Adidas shoes, Adidas if you're in America. And um, I've got a little bralette, which I've shown you often. This is why we don't have men in our group because we do boobs and butts and bellies and all kinds of beautiful things, right? So it's a safe group. Um, and so, so what this is, is just a very simple, it's, it's, it's nice and cool, and it's got this flap around me. If you know me, you've seen my belly many times. So, so it depends on how you stand. It depends on, you've got to get your posture right. You want to find your groove. You, when you take a picture, you don't want to do this, because this is not how you stand. Maybe this is how you stand, okay? 
And I shared, if you saw my post, I think it was a day or two ago, I have a major health issue that I'm facing right now and I have full confidence, full faith, that my God-given body will heal herself. And I take full ownership for that. In the meantime, we don't rest down. We put on a little bit of bling, some lipstick, and get to work. All right, and you guys look amazing, by the way. Thank you for making the effort. I can see it. All right, so I'm too scared to dress nicely because I might lure a man away. Okay, have you heard that before? Have you felt that before? You are not responsible for another man's eyes. You are not responsible for another man's eyes. Modesty is a condition of the heart and modesty can be modern and beautiful and fashion forward. Modesty shows sensitivity to sin or potential sin. It is not ugly Betty. It is not no makeup. Modesty is not looking, looking sloppy in your tacky tracky and your husband's stained t-shirt. That is not modesty. That is lazy. I'm going to call it as I see it, okay? And if it offends you, where there is a sting, there's usually some truth. I know that. I feel stings on a regular basis. So that's what that is, okay? Still in your nightgown, uh, Debbie, dog sitting is not something I signed up for. Okay, I can't see the whole message. That's cool, guys. The fact that you're here is awesome. That's awesome. But I know going forward, you're going to get up, dress up, and be on that Zoom call and stand out, okay? Look at the people that you see on video right now. Who is standing out to you? You want to take note of that. You want to take a screenshot. Is there something that you like? I see Renee's got a beautiful makeup, her face down, her hair is nice. Okay, and there's um, a nice, Terry has a, a nice green screen behind her. It's interesting. There's a lot of interesting things going on. Going on. It's not going to be the same for everyone, but it's interesting. It's eye-catching, which means you're standing out. And I'm always looking for people who stand out. Why? Because I like to advocate them. I like to refer them. I like to send them someone's way. I know a lot of people all over the world. I like to connect people. All right. Secondly, I'm too scared to dress up in case I outshine somebody else or dim her light because my light is too bright. Have you ever felt that? Hands up if you have. Okay, this is an active webinar, okay? I'm not going to be talking to you for an hour. Good stuff. Well, here's the answer. It's good news. You're not that powerful, honey. You don't have the power to dim somebody else's light. Only God does and only she does, right? So you cannot dress so beautifully and be confident and loving one day and outshine somebody else. Only she can do that. And remember, there's a moment of power. In our coaching program, you've got all the scripts. The moments of power when you get negative feedback. The moments of power when you get a compliment. Those are connecting moments of power. Fashion is a connector. If you saw me close up, I don't know if you can, you might say, wow, I like your earrings, or I like those pink earrings. And then there's a moment of power, and we have a connection. So you focus on your light, and you're called to be a bold light. Don't play around and mess your time with your dimmer. Hey, that's for your lounge and for your, for your bedroom, okay? Don't play with your dimmer. Switch up that thing full ball, and, and go and find though, because those who are in the dark, whose light is dim, will be drawn to you. Especially if you put on that smile when you are beautifully dressed and presented, okay? Um, waiting for the weight, okay? So we've been talking about this a lot. I have had a weight journey, roller coaster journey my whole life. Normally I could eat anything and then I eat clean and I just drop it. Well, I was doing that for apparently too long and my body said, uh-uh, I'm done living like that, no more. So uh, you, you can read my story in the Dress to Connect group. It's a shocking story. It's a bikini before and after. It is not a weight loss uh, shot. It is a, take my warning, is your red alert, guys. Let me tell you something. My poop shoot is closed, okay? It's, it's, it's closed. It's cemented. It's day 24. Nothing is moving. It's not easy. You need to take my warning as your red alert, and you need to get strong. I am young. I'm 48 years old. And I've always been active and I just didn't think that. But anyway, if you have, uh, if, does anyone here have sensitive digestive issues, constipation, stuff like that? All right, a few of you. My health mentor says a lot of people who are high adrenaline people, especially if you come from an abusive background, you are so ready for fight or flight. You're so used to that. You're so trained for that, that your system becomes highly sensitive to food, to smells, to, to all kinds of different things, especially food. So any digestive issues 
are typically for the adrenaline fight or flight. Now, I've done a lot of work and I've overcome a lot of stuff and I'm free of it all, but it still means my body experiences certain things. So stress is such a bad thing for the thyroid and the endocrine system. There is a Zoom event happening tonight, a spontaneous impromptu event that Mary and kindly agreed to do. It's happening. Carla is going to drop the Zoom link, if you don't mind, Carla, in the chat box. It's free. You can ask her any health question you have on the planet. She is an incredible woman. It's free. It will cost you nothing. You get access to a guru. She's been on Oprah. She's been all over the world. Okay, so she's walking me through this thing. I believe my body will heal. But don't wait for the wait. Don't, 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 don't hide and dress down because you're overweight or underweight, whatever it is. Start loving your body. Wear the t-shirt like I have, like Sarah is. Sarah is doing an amazing job. And I know that Sarah won't mind if I share with you. She says, for a long time, she, she felt like she should or could be a boy, you know, just being a tomboy and just not fully embracing. Look at her, she's a gorgeous blonde. Okay, she's, she's stunning and she's working hard on herself and she's gonna be married one day and have a family and wear the t-shirt. That's what changed it for me. Karen has done the same thing. I know she's done the same. And young Jen, by the way. Okay, so anyone here who feels shy, that maybe you have a shy personality and it's not that easy to be bold, um, or, or you wish you weren't so shy, we know shy is a lie, okay? Nothing that God made is made to be shy. Not the oceans, not the mountains, not the, not the, not, not the lions, not the beautiful jaguars, nothing was designed to be shy. We're not designed to blend in. The giraffe, okay, with her beautiful long lashes is not shy. She's not shy about her beauty. And it's all a condition of the heart. So here's a common one. Yeah, but nobody else is dressing up. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's, let's go there. That, that, that is the same as saying, uh, no, that's a separate one. So, so nobody else is dressing up. Okay, so what you're telling me is you're letting strangers dictate your personal style and your behavior and your decision making and your life. Right? You're letting strangers dictate your life. Why? Nobody else is dressing up, great. Easy to stand out, easy to get noticed, easy to get that promotion, easy to launch my new business, easier to meet that guy that you had your eye on, okay? Easier. I'm too scared to, to dress up. Here's a very common one because of the negative catchy comments that I get from other women. Okay, so same thing, I understand that. What else will you allow to dictate to you? Politics, economics, social situations, your health situation. Don't be that wave tossed about in the ocean, depend, you know, reliant on the weather and what other people are wearing and what they are doing and I've got nowhere to go and so I'm going to use the excuse of just dressing down. No. There are many people online standing out, suited and booted, making an absolute huge success of what they're doing right now. With men too, okay? Yes, Sarah. With men too, being too bold. Why? Because they're giving you the coming on to you oh so men as well yeah listen you got you got insecure men and women out there okay it's not just just the men or just the women just giving negative comments so you have scripts in your coaching program as you know sarah and you have direct access to me for one-on-one -on -one if you ever want to role play that stuff because that's important but don't don't let somebody else's insecurity become yours i got a message from a beautiful woman yesterday saying i so miss dressing up but i'm so done with the bitchy comments I can't handle it anymore, so I'd rather just put my tools down and just blend into the background. So, of course, like, so we had a conversation. So I'm like, no, that is your choice. You chose to go that way, or you can choose to find another way. There is another way, and that's a moment of power. Hey, you know, Karen, I don't, I don't dress up to dress you down. I just have a passion for fashion, and I find it gives me energy to do my work in the day. And by the way, there's an amazing free group if you'd like to join us. It's called Dress to Connect. Moment of power, bam. Don't take offense, guys. Don't take offense, okay? Um, nowhere, I've got nowhere to go, so what's the point in dressing up? Go online. You go to the supermarket. Everyone is behind masks and feeling nervous or feeling frustrated. Or feel, be the one. Be the one to shine bright. Be the one to get a smiley face on your mask. Be the one to cheekily, when nobody's looking, pull the mask down and say, I love your shoes. Okay? I do that all the time. When there's no management looking, I'll just pull it down and I'll say, oh my gosh, tell me you got that dress recently so I can go get it. Okay? And women love that. They love that. So, 
Have you now you've heard me on this, right? 1 Peter 3, verse 3 is the most one of the most out of context, misused, abused scriptures in the scriptures. 1 Peter 3, verse 3, where it says, you and in various versions, you have your own versions. Your beauty should not come from outward adornment, such as elaborate hairstyles or gold jewelry or fine clothing, but it must come from the inner, quiet, gentle spirit, right? That is not putting a ban on being beautiful or wearing beautiful clothes. If you go and read 1 Peter 1, 2, and then 3, you will see that he's talking to the wife. He's talking to a wife and saying, when your husband goes astray, if you go astray and you, if he goes astray and you see that he's gone out of alignment with his father in heaven, don't use your outward adornment, in other modern terms, your sexy wiles, right? We can do that with our husbands. We can be sexy and kind of be a bit playful and a bit manipulative sometimes in a, in a lighthearted way. It's saying don't use that to bring him back in line with his father, but rather let your fruit be the fruit of a quiet, gentle, inner praying spirit. Let that bring your husband back, okay? It's not saying be an ugly, better, be ugly Betty. I can't even tell you how many times I get this. One, uh, someone will say to me on the phone, but Linda, I'm struggling because in the Bible it says, like, and I, I go, yep, 1 Peter 3. Oh, how did you know? It's like, I know, okay? So, so if, you, if you look at that scripture anyway, if you see it as, well, it's a ban on beauty, well, that goes against the Proverbs 31 woman, right? It totally goes against that. The wife of noble character is dressed in fine linen, hello? So you have to look at things in the full verse. Don't take one out and go, oh, well, I've got to just dress down. No, 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 no. This is the year that you are going to shine. You will meet adversity. You will meet resistance. But it's okay. I'm here. You are here. You're not alone. And you'll get through it. And you'll become influential. And you'll help women out of the darkness. And, and you know this one as well. Who was the first to clothe anybody? It wasn't God, right? It was Adam and Eve. They knew somehow inherently how to sew fig leaves together and to present themselves and cover themselves before God because they were ashamed of their nakedness. Then he came along, it says in Genesis 3, and he covered with sheepskin the man and his wife. So he, was, he made a, a, a sacrifice of his own creation to cover us. He could have let them walk out in, in, in fig leaves. It would have been fine. It's okay. I mean, it's not like there was a whole audience waiting outside the Garden of Eden for them, right? It was just them. But he covered them in luxurious sheepskin. For me, that is confirmation that that is his signaling. I'm always here for you. Uh, how you cover yourself and how you do this will always be a reminder of how much I love you, my covenant with you. So when I get dressed in the morning, I always think of him. I have conversations with him throughout the day. But then I often say like, like okay, Lord, like, what are we gonna wear today? Like we, you know, as in, you know who I'm gonna meet and I ask for inspiration or sometimes I'll ask for something new if I feel that way. So. That's his covering. The scriptures are full of clothing and dressing analogies. You got your pen and paper? Here we go. He's in, oh, and I, and I wrote this down because I love this, all right? God is in everything. I have too many, too many Christian and faithful women saying he doesn't care what a way he, now here's a question that I asked a lot of women. Does God care about what you wear? You know the answer I typically get? No, he loves me as I am. I didn't ask, does he love you? I asked, does he care about what you wear? Can you see that confusion? That, that they, no, it doesn't matter, he loves me as I am. That's not what I asked. Does he care about what you wear? The answer is, oh yes. And I'm gonna give you plenty of, of, of evidence, but of course he loves you as you are. But does he care about what you wear? Absolutely, and here comes the evidence. Okay, and it's not mutually exclusive. So he said everything, okay, he spoke to the donkey. He spoke to the waves. He spoke to the fig tree. He spoke to the whale. Fabric comes from silk, right? Silk comes from the worms. The cotton that you might be wearing comes from the cotton fields of the soil that he made. He's in everything. The clothing you have on your body right now. Yes, Debbie, we are giving glory to him when we look our best. It's scriptural. It's in here. You'll give you the very scripture. The, the, the black that Carla's got on right now, that I love my body t-shirt, the, the bathrobe that Debbie has on, the beautiful red scarf that, that Young Jin has on. He's in that, even if it's mass produced in China, okay? Don't, don't get distracted. The Chinese are his people, they make it, they still get the raw materials from what he 
originally made. So Job 38, 8 verses 8 to 9. This is one of my favorite, favorite scriptures. Listen to how tender this is and how it shows you his heart. So now Job is having a meltdown, okay? Understandably, because the guy's going through hell, all right? He's having a meltdown and, and he's like, God, like, where are you? And where are you? And then God, God just kind of like pictures up. And, and then on 8 to 9, it says, God said, where were you, Job? Where were you when the seed burst forth from the womb? When I made clouds its garment, and I wrapped it in thick darkness. Isn't it so beautiful? Like he created the ocean, and then he treats it and wraps it like, like a baby. How much more does he care about what you're wearing, right? How much more does he want to see you glorify him and yourself and your family through what he gave you? So that's Job. that is just like a profound, profound thing to me. When I made clouds its garment, and wrapped it in thick darkness. It's just so precious. 1 Peter 2, 9, and uh, we are a royal priesthood, okay? And also, of course, kings in the marketplace. What do priests look like? What do kings look like? Not like what the world looks like lately, right? We, we put scripture and we want to be set apart and we want his favor. Hello? Well, then get out of your tacky tracky and ditch those yoga pants and you can be comfortable and not look like a slob. At the same time, comfort is not mutually exclusive to looking good. It's an excuse. And if you were tortured and hasn't been serving you, ditch it and move on. Isaiah 60 verse 1. Arise and shine, for your light has come. His glory is upon you. What are you wearing if his glory is upon you? Every day you wake up, he says his glory is upon you. How are you receiving his glory? How are you, how are you communicating that? Colossians 3.23, do all things as unto him, right? How you speak, how you work in your marriage, and we all do our best. It's not about perfection. It doesn't say, accept how you dress. It doesn't say, but don't worry about what you look like. Do all things as unto him. 1 Corinthians 6, and uh, Debbie, I think it was you who alluded to this earlier. Your body is not your own. Your body is not your own. There was a price that was paid for your body. And we are to glorify him in it. I was taught, I heard once in a church that our bodies are just shells and all that matters is our soul. And I'm like, that is not scriptural. That is not biblical. Our bodies are holy temples. Why do you think they shut down when we don't treat them well? If our body shuts down, we can't house our souls. And so it's body, mind, and spirit. The mind is akin to the soul. So it's body, soul, and spirit. And our bodies house them. Romans 12, 11. Never be lacking in zeal. Zeal is enthusiasm and ardor and, and a fervent approach to something. Never be lacking in zeal. It doesn't say in brackets, but don't worry about how you dress. You need, no, you need no effort there. Never be lacking in zeal. Isaiah 59, 19. It talks about garments are vengeance for clothing, and they are clad with zeal as a cloak. So there's garments of vengeance. There's also garments of praise. And they were clad with zeal as a cloak, a cloak of zeal. He also talks about a cloak of humility, which I love. Remember when Yeshua got down on his knees and he, and he washed his disciples' feet? Did you notice how he changed his outfit for that? Everything that he does is intentional. So he donned the outfit of his servant. Now we are servant-hearted followers and lovers of, of Yahweh, the creator of all things, right? And his son Yeshua, who redeemed us to him. And there's, there's an outfit for everything. And there is most definitely a success uniform and there is a failure uniform. And you need to see what you've been wearing. And you need to make sure that you know the difference between the two. Isaiah 61 10. He has clothed me with garments of salvation and covered me with a robe of righteousness. He's always dressing, he's always clothing, he's always uplifting and presenting. Isaiah 50 verse 3. I clothe the heavens with darkness, and I make sackcloth their covering. Colossians 3.23. Whatever you do, did we do that one already? We did. Do it with all your heart. Yeah, we did. Do all things as unto him with all your heart. Romans 12.2. Write this one in big capital letters. Do not be conformed to this world. Do not look like what the world looks like. Do not complain about COVID. 
Do not criticize your freaking government or whichever party you freaking are ahead of or behind or for or against. Don't get into that cesspool of conversation. You are higher and better than that. Leave it to the whinges and the complainers and the freaking beep, beep, beepers. There's millions of them. You do not have to do the same. Pray for freaking Biden. Pray for freaking Trump. Okay, we know media has got a whole different slant on everything. What you hear coming out of South Africa is not what's going on in South Africa. What you see happening in, in, in America, we don't know. Only God knows. So don't jump on that, that ugly, dripping with blah, Facebook, freaking Insta, everywhere conversation that is attacking one and creating division and disunity and, and, and mistrust. You are communicating you're not trustworthy. I am fully informed of what's going on in the world. I am fully aware of the decisions I need to make with my family and my business. I will not step into that conversation. It's not worth my time and it's not glorifying. And unless you can do so, and even when you, if, you can, if you want to bring a little bit of positivity to it and you want the thick skin to get hammered, go for it. Let's go for it. Just drop your little good little gem in there and run, <laughs> you know, whatever. But leave it to the complainers and the winters and the whiners. 1 Corinthians 6, you are not your own. Here's the one I was looking for. Glorify God in your body. 1 Corinthians 6. Psalms 118.24. Let me ask you a question. We're going to a party, okay? I invite you to a party. There's going to be 100 men and women there. There's a massive celebration. Think in your mind now what you're going to wear. It's a party, okay? It's a huge, big deal. What are you going to wear? Do you have an idea? Are you starting to think about what you might wear? Give me a thumbs up if you kind of start thinking about what outfits you might. Yeah, okay. Psalm 1, 18, 24. Every day is a celebration. Every day is a party. What are you wearing to that celebration? No, you don't have to be dripping in, in bling and nine inch heels and red carpet ready, but you also do not need to be the opposite. Because, but, but nobody sees you, right? Nobody sees you at home. Yeah, mm -hmm. you just caught yourself a nobody and he sees you. And, and maybe your husband sees you and your kids see you. What do your kids, based on how you're dressing or your grandkids, think about the role of mom, the most presidential position for women on the planet? What does that look like? Or as an aunt or as a grandmother or as a sister, what does that look like, right? Role modeling to them. 1 Thessalonians 5.11, encourage one another. In other words, compliment one another. Give and receive compliments. It's actually scriptural. Exodus 35, 35. He has filled them with the skill to do all kinds of work as engravers, designers, and embroiderers. Men actually in the beginning, in the early times, were the designers and the weavers and the, and the fashion designers. It was men. And so he gave them the skill to do that. Why? Why would he give them skill if there wasn't a purpose to it? We are called to be an inspiration. And I want you to type this in the chat box and I want you to answer the following question. And if you have heard this question from me before, maybe once last year sometime, I want you to not share. You're going to tea with the queen of England, okay? Now give, that'd be very specific. What will you wear to tea with the queen of England? She's invited you, something about you is very special and there's a big hoo-ha, big pomp and ceremony. What are you going to wear? I want to see your comments. Just type quick and fast. What are you going to wear to tea with the Queen of England? There's no right or wrong answer here. Don't think too much. I'm looking for those who are putting action behind their thoughts, action behind their commitments. You might say a dress and heels. Heels, a dress, possibly a hat. Yes, awesome. Karen knows because she's British, it had to be very appropriate. What else? Kagla, Alma, Terry, Young Jen, Carolyn, hello, beautiful, Debbie. Something bright in a hat and very suit like. Nice, okay. Renee, dress, hair down by hairdresser, lovely high heels, pearls, pink skirted suit, huge hat, subtle lash, a bright pink lip. Nice, I like that detail. Those of you on the fence, you're going to make us wait a long time. Nudge them, people, nudge them. A red jumpsuit with red lipstick. Okay, nice. 
I am not moving forward until each one of you has told me what you're gonna wear. Okay, Yangjin, perfect. Something pink with humility, okay? What does humility look like, Alma? Maybe you're coming in looking humble. All right, guys, that's great. It's nice and specific. Um, so, so now let me ask you a question. Now you're going to dress with heels and summer hat. Nice, Melanie. Yeah, definitely. Black pantsuit and heels. Nice, Carolyn. So now you're invited to meet with an orphan who you've been paying money toward to help that orphan to live for the past few years. What are you going to wear? Type it in and be honest. What would you wear? The same outfit, Kadla, is that true before you met me and before you heard my teaching? No, so don't give your answer if you've had this before, okay? kadla has been with me for three years. Tell what you would wear, and if you've heard me say this before, be honest, what would you have worn to go and meet an orphan? Jeans, boots, nice top, t-shirt and jeans, flat shoes, hair up, pretty earrings. Okay. Because the truth is, most people wouldn't dress up. Most people wouldn't put lipstick on. Most people wouldn't put, for a child orphan, who, by the way, kids are drawn to bling and color and all things sparkly and beautiful, they wouldn't even think about attire. Don't be conformed to this world. Don't dress up for the queen and not for someone who you are representing. You're an ambassador of the poor, right? Love your neighbor as yourself, it says. If you, if you love your neighbor as yourself, let me ask you a question. How would you dress your neighbor for a special day? If you were to love yourself as well as you love your neighbor, how would you dress her? If she said to you, I don't know what to do, how would you come over to her next door and go to her closet and how would you help her to get dressed in the morning? You probably put more effort into her than you do yourself. Right? Why? You are awesomely and wondrously made, Psalm 130. 39, 14. It's not fearfully and wonderfully. The original scriptures is awesomely and wondrously. So the awesomeness about you must send a message, right? If you're made that way, he didn't make you awesomely for you to blend into the background. He didn't make you wondrously for you to be shy. And you can have a quiet, gentle personality. You don't have to be bold and outspoken like me, but he made you to be seen and to be loved. It's beloved. Isaiah 64, 6, and all our unrighteousness are as soiled rags. So, so guilt and shame, if you're carrying any guilt and shame, the scriptures say it's like soiled rags. It's like dirty, soiled, stained, old rags. Guilt and shame needs to be dealt with. That's why God uses that analogy. If you can't understand guilt and shame, picture it as dirty, soiled rags. You don't want that on your body. And I want to say this, okay? If, you, if you're shy and if you have low self-esteem, that is not humble. Low self-esteem is a preoccupation with self. I know, I was there once. Low self-esteem is a preoccupation with self. We must align our thoughts with his about us. Even in Revelations, listen to this. Revelations 19.6. Fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. So, so when you dress in the morning, it's a perfect time to be in right standing with him. You find that in the righteous deeds of the saints, what you wear impacts what you will do, your deeds. God is the best dressed, right? Psalm 31, Psalm 93, 1. He is clothed with majesty. He is clothed and girded himself with strength. So you get a picture of what that looks like. In Psalm 65, 13. The meadows are dressed with flocks. I think that's so pretty. All right, I'm almost at the end of the scriptures. I'm giving you power tools here that you can choose some of your favorite ones. Maybe some will speak to you more than others. And you can put them up in your dressing area. You can print them out. You can enlarge them. And you can say, I will get up, dress up, and be a bold light on a hill. And here's your favorite scriptures. So, um, so anybody here like jewelry? Enjoy bling? Okay, yeah, most of us. So Psalm 3 21 to 22. Listen to this. I love it. It says, watch over sound wisdom and discretion. They become life to your being and an adorning to your neck. So next time you put your necklace on, 
think about wisdom and discretion. I am putting on wisdom and discretion, right? So you, so whatever it is it says, with sound wisdom and discretion are like a necklace for your neck. So when you put it on, you say, this is what I'm wearing. So the whole day through, you have these physical reminders because we weren't raised and taught, you know, the way the Jews are, who are the protectors and the doers of the Torah. And they have the, 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 the tefet, what's it called? The, I always forget it. The temple or whatever it is. Um, uh, so you missed it one. It is um, Psalms 3, 21 to 22. I think, I hope. Check it out. But I've just finished Psalms. Or it might be, uh, just check it out. It's in Psalms, and I've just come out of Psalms, and it's strange why it says Psalms 3, Renee. So we'll check that out. Maybe some of you can just grab your Bible if you're there. But it's 2122, and it's talking about sound wisdom and discretion. They become life to your being and an adorning to your neck. Okay, and he knows us. He knows that we need reminders the whole day through. So, so we don't dress as a Jews do. So how, how amazing that I might decide, when I see my bracelet, I'm going to decide, um, Debbie, that this is grace, okay? This is grace. This is my reminder to have grace. And then when I, when I fiddle with my necklace, I might say, this, this is my wisdom and discretion. If you have discretion about this thing, and, and it's a powerful physical reminder. Um, and also remember, like the opposite also is true. In Psalm 73, 5, so, Renee, this might be the previous one, the jewelry, the necklace. It might be Psalm 73, because this one, okay, forget it. Okay, forget it. I, I don't know. <laughs> That's the one scripture I'm not sure of. A tefillin, yes, thank you, Kadla. The Jews wear the tefillin, the tefillin. That's right. Psalm 73, 5 says, and pride is their necklace. So he's reminding us, are you wearing wisdom and discretion, or are you wearing pride? Isaiah 133. See how good it is for brothers to dwell together in unity, like the precious oil on the head running down the collar of his robes. That's unity. God sees unity as precious oil running down on the collar of our robes. It's beautiful. And Psalm 109.29. We'll wrap up here. Let, let my accusers be wrapped in their own confusion as with a cloak. So let my accusers be wrapped like a cloak in a cloak of confusion. Okay, there's just garments everywhere. So, so you have to ask yourself, what's in your garments? Where is God in it? And, and it, it's attached to your body. It's impacting how you feel. It's impacting how you think. You know that the way you dress impacts the way you feel, the way you think. That's why a lot of people dress down, because they're feeling down. They're feeling insecure. They're feeling low. So they dress low. You have to get up to dress up and raise up your whole self. And the most important garment, if you've heard me say this, then don't answer. But just unmute yourself. What's the most important garment that you think that there is? And there's no right or wrong, really. But what's the most important garment to you? I'm going to come and call on someone if you don't unmute yourself. Debbie, go for it. I really think it's your smile. That's awesome. Yeah, I love that. Because that definitely clothes your body. I agree with that. Anyone else? And the smile, by the way, is one of our 30-piece capsule wardrobe items. Sarah, go for it. You need to unmute yourself. Uh, the cloak of humility. Yes, but you know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, but awesome, right? The cloak of yes. humility. That's why I love my sachets. You guys call it dusted in America. That's not a sexy enough name for a sachet. So my sachets are my reminders, my cloak of humility. And, and you know what the reward of, uh, for humility is? It's the, it's the fear of our creator, esteem, riches, and life. It says that two or three times in the scriptures. The, the, the reward for humility, which by the way is a far more powerful weapon than any other I have ever tried to use, over and above, Defense, payback, whatever it is. The reward for humility is is, is is fear and love and awe of our creator, of our father in heaven, esteem, riches, and life. That's a pretty sweet deal if you ask me. So remember, being shy and having low self-esteem is not humble. It's a self-preoccupation. So, so 
so this is what we get. The whole the whole call here is is to arise and shine, right? Is to get up, dress up, and be that bold light on a hill. Style is just a skill, and and beauty has a powerful purpose. And it's been under attack for a long time. So we want to be that woman. Every single one of you here. You want to make the decision to put action behind being the woman who's going to get up, dress up, and be a bold light on a hill, and learn how to respond to the negative comments that come, and learn how to respond to the positive comments that come. If you can't receive a compliment, you are not humble in, in yourself enough. It takes humility to receive a compliment. So you go, oh, no, like, no. You humble yourself and say, thank you, I received that. I learned that from my coach. Okay, and that's it, guys. I've got loads more, but I'm gonna stop there. So there is a call to action here. And we're talking about our bodies, we're talking about our beauty. I want to tell you that there are women I speak to on the phone every single day who are hurting, whose husbands have left them, whose marriages they have walked out of, who have, who've discovered affairs. There are single women who are lonely and don't want to be single. There are women whose own kids are taking them to court. Okay, there's court cases, all kinds of things going on. There, one of our clients has lost 16 people last year to death, friends and family members, not all COVID related. These women are in pain. And when you are a woman who is bold and beautiful and confident and smiling and you look inviting and approachable, you will bring light to her day. You will bring light to her life. That's powerful work that you are doing. If you're looking for connection and for influence, that is it right there. That's it right there. Okay, so, so here's the deal. If you're, if you're on this call or you're watching the replay and you are ready to take action, then you need to go to www.lindapage.com. Thank you, Carla, for dropping that in. And go to our homepage and watch the video case study. Watch a short, mes a short video message that is all about, and some of the women who are here have done that and they're here as a result of that, getting major results. Okay, Karen's influence in her business and her life has that three-folded, right, Karen? It's like, so, so just give us a 30 second. From, from learning the skill of style, how has it helped you? 30 seconds. It, do you know what? It's given me permission to be the person that I always knew that I was. And I shied away from that for so long. And it's like you say, people say, oh, she's, she's too loud, bold, bright. <laughs> and I shied away from that. And what it's done for me, I took myself out of sitting in a corner because I felt as though I could control that. And I felt when I stepped into the spotlight before, it's like, oh, I feel totally exposed. Whereas now it's given me a thing of, I'm stepping into the spotlight because I've got God's light shining through me. And I, want, and I know that that's what people are seeing. Absolutely, fantastic, thank you. And you don't have to like all her bling. You don't have to like what she wears. It's not about that. It's about understanding that we're all different. Some wear makeup and some don't. Some love big, beautiful bling and some don't. It's not about that. It's about you stepping into the light of who you are called to be because women need you. And so those who haven't done that yet and who are looking to do that, go to littlepage.com, watch the case study, the video case study, and book a call with me. We only have two coaching program uh, sales in the year, normally in May and November. But 2020 has been catastrophic for so many women. I have brought it forward to, uh, to February. So in February, we're doing a lot of stuff on our body and on the coaching program. If you book a call and you get it in, in January, you get the, the February reduced price. Okay, you get a whole beep, beep, beep load of stuff. You get coaching, you get a book. Where's my book? It's somewhere there. You get jewelry, okay, all kinds of different blends. You get coaching calls with these amazing women and others. You get one-on-ones um, -on with me. On, on, you, you get to call your closet. We do all kinds of things. You, you, you get a package that is uh, a toolkit, a blueprint on how to get up, dress up, and be a bold light on a hill. You book a call with me in January, you get the February deal going forward, okay? And I'm not going to do the May, I'm going to do February, I'm going to do the end of the year again because women need help. And if you're here and you've done it, or you're in the middle of the coaching, you have a refer a friend link, you know what to do, go and refer a friend. It's very, very simple. There are women who are struggling. Women who are curled up, I'm not kidding you, in her words, in a fetal position on my bed for weeks and weeks crying, just with no hope. All right, so if that's you, you are welcome to book a call with me. 
and we'll have a one-on-one -on -one and we'll decide whether or not my coaching program is a good fit for you and whether or not you are a good fit for my client environment because I'm handcrafting this environment. I've said no to many women and I have a huge amount of respect for them, but there hasn't been enough common ground and that's the right thing to do. Okay, and secondly, if you have not yet seen it, in the Dress to Connect group under the events tab, my gosh, I'm switching up too. <laughs> if it looks like I'm glowing, that's what it is. Um, if you have not yet seen it, there is a webinar coming up on the 28th of January under the events tab. It's called 28 Days on the 28th of January. There is a massive, big competition challenge invitation coming up for the 28 days of February. Yes, I did read there, Sarah. Uh, well, no, I'm going to keep my heat, actually. I was in the UK for 17 years, and I'm loving sweating. Like, I don't care. <laughs> so go and register, <coughs> excuse me, for that event. If you are serious about you or your team or your colleagues or your friends and family, getting to I love my body, not waiting for the weight, stepping up your game, dressing up no matter what your size, shape, age, or height, or profession. We're going to be doing three things every day. We're going to be posting something in our private group every day. And Carla is going to be monitoring who's doing, who goes all the way through to 28 days. And that person or those few people, because it will funnel down, those few people are going to be blessed and rewarded. And you'll see, and you're going to take a picture before, all the, all the details are coming and after, and you'll see your mindset and your body change in 28 days of saying, I love my body. It is powerful. People here, if you have, the t-shirt on, who born the t-shirt, her parents love has been transformed, young Jen has got hers, Alma has very recently joined us and she's going to be doing an assignment soon that has her wearing a Love My Body t-shirt. We do bikini swimsuit challenges, okay? No excuses. We are not going to, yes, Sarah, we are not going to wait for the weight. We are not, we're going to love our bodies. Loving and embracing and accepting yourself is the beginning of your return to health. It's the beginning of you loving yourself. You will and cannot love others well until you love yourself well. Guys, I am not, I'm totally constipated right now, okay? And I'm not going to do TMI, but, but, but I love my body. I've got some very unpleasant things going on. I love my body. I wear my t-shirt. I'm in a bikini. My bikini is all over the Facebook group, okay? And it's not a bikini weight loss brand. It's let my red alert be your final warning. Don't wait. Don't wait for the wait. So that is the last call to action, is sign up on uh, that events tab and, uh, and, and, and bring friends to the Dress to Connect group. There are women who don't have the funds to do any coaching right now, and they're getting a lot of encouragement and hope from you. You're in that group, and we're doing tips and tricks, and so if you brought them there, fantastic. I know some of you have invited many people there. Those are powerful seeds that you have sown. So I want to do an hour and a quarter, and we've got six minutes left. Give me your questions, and I'm going to come at you directly if you have any, okay? So if you're ready with the question, just don't wait for it. Just unmute yourself and tell me you have a question. Fashion, freedom, whatever, because this is the year. This is the year that you are not going to be holding back. This is the year you're going to have fun with fashion. This is the year that you're going to be free in your beauty. You are not responsible for other people or their opinions or their eyes. You are responsible for you. So any questions, unmute yourself. If you want to type it in, you can do that too. If you have no questions, fantastic. Let's just quickly go to the chat box. I don't think that I see any there. Yeah, okay. Thanks, yes. I'm the address to connect. Tadla, if you have the link there, then that, um, then that would be good. If you could drop the link to address to connect and to the event, that would be fantastic. Um, but if there's no questions, and if you have one that you'd rather ask me privately, that often happens, then I'm going to stay on for another four minutes. And you can do that too. But otherwise, we can wrap up the recording. Thanks so much, Padla. And guys, thanks for being here. Thanks for giving.